Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is an, a custom Python workshop. And in today's workshop, I'm going to demonstrate how to scrape weather data off this website called wonderground.com. But a lot of these concepts you can apply to many other areas that you're interested in, uh, when you're looking to pull data off a website. And it's a really powerful technique here. So let's go ahead and, and get started here. So I have this data, uh, website here and I have the city of Toronto. And I'm looking to pull information such as the mean, max, and min temperature, but I don't want to go through each page and uh, copy and paste and have human error. I want to create a program that will do it for me. And this is going to be the short version of a longer version of the video where I'm actually going to show you how to do everything end to end. On uh, this instance, I'm just going to show you a few of the techniques that will allow you to get an understanding of how to pull this information. So what we're going to do first is we're going to import some libraries or import some modules. First module we're going to import is beautiful soup. And these are essentially just uh, blocks of code that someone else has created in the past or has been default. Yeah, someone created in the past. And we're going to leverage some of the code that's already been written here. So it should shorten, tighten our, our own code. So here we have, we'll import a beautiful soup, which is the main way of scraping web data. Uh, and then here we've imported a number of different other modules. Next thing we want to do is we want to define what our URL is. So I'm going to, I usually call it the URL and then I'm going to copy this here. And there's many ways to approach this. I'm just going to show you one example. So we're going to paste it here. And then next thing we want to do is we want to convert this information to something that the computer can actually use. So we're going to url.lib and then we're going to take advantage of some of the functions here. So we're going to url.lib.request.open bracket the URL. And this converts the the URL into something that the that beautiful soup can now use. So we're going to go soup equal to beautiful soup. That's the function here and then we're going to pass through paid the page. So now if I type in soup it's going to type in this huge block of text, which is basically just the source code. And the source code is a really excellent way of, of understanding and navigating through this. So if I right click and go view page source code, you're going to see here a lot of the background information. And I know it's going to seem really intimidating, for, especially for those of you that haven't programmed in the past, but you'll see how simple and easy it is to actually pull together this information. And But my preferred way of gathering information is actually to right click and expect each element. So here I'm looking at this nine value and you'll see it's here, it's stored here and it's stored in the classes WX data or stored in the WX value. And as well, I see it's stored in a table. I can tell by this TR and this TD information. So I'm going to take advantage of that particular knowledge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go soup dot find all. And what dot find all is it's going to search through the source code and and it's going to spit out all the the values that met met the condition. In this case, the condition is TR. So show me all the ones that have table rows. So I'm going to paste this here. You can see here it's long block of text again. Maybe not that useful. Yeah, if I were starting out, I'd definitely be looking at this. Uh, but since I already know what's in there, I'm going to pass it along. And I want to know. So one way of instead of showing all of it, I want to show the first instance of TR where first time in, in the pair source code it met this condition. So I'm going to type in uh, square bracket zero following my find all expression. And then the zero is basically just the first one. So in programming, at least in Python, one first instance is really zero. So you can see here actual average record, which is basically just the, the heading. You can also tell by the, the TH here as well. So that's that's good. That's handy. I actually want to get to the third row. So if you want to get to the third row, you're going to change this from zero to two. Okay. So this is getting closer. I see mean temperature. I see the value nine here. That's promising. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there's some TDs here and I want to find the second instance of TD, right? So the first instance is the, the temperature, mean temperature. Second instance is going to give me this column right here. So it's basically just finding the column. 
dot underscore find all and give me the second instance which is going to be one here Actually, i need to put in what we're finding td okay that's handy so now i have this data here uh now what i'm going to do next is i want to find this nine so there's a couple ways you're going to approach this the way i'm going to approach it here is i notice there's nines within this class right here the span class wx value so i'm going to take advantage of that knowledge so i'm going to go type get the same code here and then i'm going to go fine because i already know that there's only one uh one time this wx value shows up i can use fine which is going to return the first instance or the zero instance if you do find all and then i'm going to use this this uh set of code uh which i'll explain in a longer video uh, ATTRS uh, equals, which is going to allow me to take advantage of some of the class information here. So there's a class here, WX value, and I'm going to go put curly braces, and then I'm going to go dot text to actually go and pull out the, the nine information. Okay, that's handy. So now I have, now I have the mean information. Now I'm going to store this in a value variable called mean. And now I can just type in mean, call up on it. That's great. That's handy. Uh, next thing I can also take advantage of is the fact that this two represents the third call, third row here, the first row, second row, third row. Now I can just change this to three. Now I have the max information. And now I can do the same thing for min here and change this to four. So now I have mean, max, and min. So now I have all their information scraped down. And you might say like, well, that seems like a lot of work to actually go pull the information. Why wouldn't I just copy and paste it? But really, this is just setting up. I'm going to show you my longer version of the code. And this is a completed one. I'll, I'll do a full video where we're going to recreate this. And I'm going to explain it in detail. That one's probably going to be over half an hour. Uh, but just keep this short. I'm just going to explain this code really quickly. So these blocks of text. And it's also going to be on GitHub, so you can take a look as well. This area imports libraries. This one creates a CSV file that I'm going to write to. It's going to save to my desktop. And then here just loops through the various years. So here I'm going to look through 2014, December, uh, the 1st through the 31st. Here just saves the date information. And what you'll see here is that this is the, U the URL. But what you notice here is that it has the plus the date plus the rest of the, the URL here. So this is a really important key here is that you need to figure out how to get to the previous page or next page. So here, if I type the 20th, it's going to change this value to the 20th. So it's a really interesting way of, of looping through. So I'm basically looping through a whole month's of worth of data and uh, analyzing it. And then here you'll see this code's familiar. This code's familiar. Uh, there's some additional information that I pulled down and some exceptions I had to handle. And then here I'm just writing it to this variable. And then I'm going to write it to the file and then I'm just going to print the code. So I'm going to run that really quickly, run module. And you'll see here in the shell, it's pasting the, what it's, what's getting output into the CSV. I designed that on purpose. I find it really is really helpful for troubleshooting and debugging purposes. It does slow the program down a little bit, but I'm willing to do that trade off just to make sure that everything's operating appropriately. So here you'll see how quickly it is to gather this information. I'm not even sure if I can navigate between the different pages, but even if I could navigate between the different pages, it's still collecting all the information air free or hopefully air free if you designed it properly. And as well, I can have the program do this and then I can go and do something else. So you'll see here, it's going to go to the 31st and then, then complete. And then it's going to create this CSV file that I'm going to be opening up right now. And uh, perfect. So then you'll see the CSV file contains all really great information. And I actually use this to, this is the more complete version where here I have scraped data, December data from for 35 years in a really quick and easy fashion that I didn't have to do uh, manually by myself. Then I use that data to to actually create a visualization here just because in Toronto. So today is December 24th, Christmas Eve in Toronto. And it was an unusually hot day 
uh, and there's clearly no snow because of how hot it is. So here I'm going to take a look at uh, the dashboard that I created. So here I use the information to create this dashboard where you can then pick a particular day. So the 24th and it'll tell you percentage of years with snow. So 36 years worth of data, uh, the average temperature on this particular day, uh, the, the min, the lowest temperature. So you can see here, 1980 was the, the lowest temperature at minus 16. And then as well, the highest temperature was actually 2015 at 13 degrees, a high of 13. So you can see this information tells you that today was a warmest day in last 36 years, last 35 years. And then as well here, the sunshine tells you that it was sunny and that there was no snow. And then the snowman here, the snow person tells you here that, that there was snow. So again, I'll show you the full video of how I pulled down all this data, did the loops, we'll walk through it. We'll do a more in-depth video as well on playing to release as part of my class. As part, uh, is a workshop on Python as well, a web scraping workshop. So you can better be able to web scrape all the information that you want. It's a really interesting and powerful technique. But if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was useful. And, and I appreciate if you would subscribe. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.